بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان احسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار uh, so this is our fourth lesson uh, discussing the topic of the good life uh, the good life of the believer in this life and the next in the previous lesson in the third lesson we looked at how allah subhanahu Uh, mentions in the Quran how he described uh, how he destroyed nations which fell into affluence affluence abundance and luxury and they became satisfied in this and how these affairs were the reason for their disbelief and satisfaction with disbelief and we looked at uh, many ayat in the quran uh, which mention this and uh, how the believer the believer is not prohibited from the good things of this life from the beauty the adornment such as wealth such as offspring such as even the things that in which one finds desire and pleasure however it is within limits and so long it does not cause a person to neglect and to become heedless of the hereafter and so we also mentioned some evidences some ayat in that respect as well so that we have a balanced uh, view a balanced position we are not prohibited to you know benefit and enjoy the favors and the bounties of allah azza wa jal but it becomes a problem when we are neglectful of the hereafter So in today's lesson we're going to start a section of uh, many many verses which describe what is the condition of a disbeliever in the life of this world. And in the section after that we will look at what is the condition of a believer in the life of this world. And we will compare and contrast between the two. So in this section the condition of a believer in the life of this world as mentioned in the Quran first of all we should know that a disbeliever is satisfied and suffices only with the life of this world and this has been mentioned in the Quran and Allah azza wa jal he reminds the believer of the reality of a disbeliever because his vision or his sight is restricted only to this world without any attention to the hereafter and the description of a disbeliever being like this is repeated frequently in the Quran in order to make the believer not to be like that and to warn the believer not to become like this and we find that a disbeliever by virtue of his by reason of his disbelief has become you know uh, attached and has begun to love the world become pleased with it become satisfied with it and these qualities are qualities which Allah azza wa jal has criticized in the Quran uh, because it leads to a per- it leads a person to pre- uh, prefer the hereafter over the world so by way of example the statement of Allah azza wa jal in surah yunus إن الذين لا يرجون لقاء لقاءنا ورضوا بالحياة الدنيا واتمأنوا بها والذين هم عن آياتنا غافلون. Indeed, those who do not hope in our meeting, in the meeting with Allah, they have no hope. Uh, they don't hope in that, and who are pleased with the life of the world, and who have become satisfied and at ease with it. and those who are heedless of our signs so here it describes a number of qualities those 
who have no hope in meeting Allah because they don't believe in it or they are not interested in it. And they are pleased with the life of this world. And they've become satisfied with it. And also those who turn away from the signs of Allah. أُولَٰئِكَ مَعْوَاهُمُ النَّارِ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ For them, their abode will be the hellfire on account of that which they used to earn. So in other words, the person who desires the world, then Allah will make the hereafter to be unlawful for him. And in general, when we look at the various categories of the people of disbelief, so for example, those who are the materialists, or the atheists, and people like that, then obviously this is very obvious and very apparent. The atheist does not believe in a creator, in a lord, does not believe in resurrection, does not believe in judgment after death, and punishment and reward. So it's obvious that such people are going to be you know, they're only going to be interested in the life of this world, the pursuit of pleasure, the pursuit of, you know, whatever pursuit it might be. And uh, um, so clearly they would be satisfied with the life of this world. Likewise, we see the Nasara, the Christians in general, because uh, they they do not have a law, they do not follow a law, because they believe simply by accepting Jesus as a man who died for their sins and holding this one-time belief will automatically save them, then they have no desire to look forward to the hereafter and to fear punishment and to hope in reward because they are automatically saved and there's no law that governs and you know restricts their behavior. Whether it be drinking alcohol, gambling, fornicating and various other things, they have no incentive or real reason to avoid these things. And so because of that, you will find that they are inclined towards the world. They are more inclined towards the world and they are easily exploited you know, by vices and by sins. Right. So this is what you find amongst the Nasara. And likewise amongst the Yahud, the Yahud, they believe that they are the, the, the chosen, the beloved of Allah, and that, you know, even if they do go to hellfire, some of them say, it will only be for a number of days, and that they are guaranteed a paradise. And, you know, so again, what incentive do you have uh, to look forward to the hereafter? None. Uh, because because you have these, these beliefs. And similarly, the polytheists, you find uh, the mushrikun, likewise, you see, because... The deen is not founded upon adal, upon justice, upon the worship of Allah alone. It is founded upon injustice, which is worshipping others besides Allah. So if the deen is founded upon injustice, then everything else from you know, the, the, the affairs of the dunya, they will be founded upon injustice as well. Uh, so you will find them um, eager for the life of this world. And we, inshallah we'll see some ayat in the Quran which mention this. A bit later, uh, they will be eager, the polytheists, uh, from the most eager of people for the life of this world, as are the Yahud. And uh, so so we see that from all of these various factions of disbelief, um, they have an inclination towards the world because of the particular belief that they have, whether atheist, whether Christian, whether Yahud, whether, you know, the, the mushrikun, the, the, the polytheists, the idol worshippers. Whereas a believer, uh, as we shall see in contrast to all of this in, in the next section, a believer has his eyes always on the hereafter, in the hereafter. And because he knows there is resurrection and judgment and reward and punishment, then in the life of this world, he knows that Allah has put in front of him commands and prohibitions. And these commands and prohibitions together, they allow him to enjoy the world in a halal way and within limits, and also to fear being um, uh, deceived by the world at the same time. So, in all of the ayat in the Qur'an that relate to this, then it is to remind the believer to keep the focus on the hereafter and never to be deceived by the world. Likewise, the statement of Allah in Surah Hud. مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا 
نوفي إليهم أعمالهم فيها وهم فيها لا يبخسون أولئك أولئك الذين ليس لهم في الآخرة إلا النار وحبط ما صنعوا فيها وباطل ما كانوا يعملون Whoever desires the life of the world and its glitter we shall pay him therein for his deeds in full and they will not be um, they will not be you know they will not lose anything they will not be short changed or you know uh, they will they will be given in full those are the ones who will have nothing in the hereafter except the fire and what they did the deeds they did therein uh, will be vain will be uh, of vain and of no use and futile was what they used to do now this particular verse here is an interesting verse because the scholars have differed as to whether it refers to the disbelievers or whether it refers to the believers as well why right? because the verse says whoever desires the life of the world and its glitter we will pay them for their deeds in full and they will not be you know uh, uh, decreased or diminished in anything but they will have nothing in the hereafter so is this verse referring to the believers or the disbelievers and so al qurtubi rahimahullah mentions how the the verse was revealed uh, it is said uh, to uh, in relation to the disbelievers and because the verse clearly says that they will have nothing in the hell in the hereafter except the hellfire and this means therefore the interpretation of this therefore is that any disbeliever who is doing righteous deeds such as keeping the ties of kinship and giving charity and you know other types of good deeds then Allah rewards him in the life of this world with certain rewards for example it could be good health it could be a sound body a strong body it could be an abundance of rizq of you know um, uh, provision and wealth and so on and so forth however nothing of that will be counted as a good deed in the hereafter so this now is from the justice of Allah azza wa jal in that he will not uh, cause any decrease he will not cause anyone to to lose anything everything that a disbeliever did of what appears to be apparent goodness apparent goodness then he will be paid in full in the life of this world for all of the benefits he's enjoying you know the benefits i mean he's already enjoying the benefit of air the benefit of water the benefit of uh, food right all the other types of uh, benefit from from you know that that are uh, found in the life of this world and then an expansion in his rizq an expansion in his offspring you know wives affluence everything that person is already being paid and likewise some of the scholars are of the view that this verse refers to the believer however in relation to the believer then it carries a particular meaning and the meaning for the believer is that any believer who does the deeds of the hereafter deeds which are done for the hereafter but he does them in order to seek benefit from the world then this person comes under this verse in that he is he will be threatened with the hellfire he will enter the hellfire but of course he will not remain in hellfire forever right unlike the disbeliever he will enter the hellfire so there are a number of scenarios that the scholars have explained in relation to this verse how does a believer fall under this verse and how does he prefer the world over the hereafter there are a number of situ- situations from them first of all is that he does his deeds in order to be praised in order to be seen in in order to be recognized by the people so for example he may acquire knowledge that it might be said he's a scholar or he may learn the quran that it might be said he is a reciter or he may give charity so the people see him and it might be said he is a very generous man right so here this person is really 
He's not seeking the hereafter by his deeds, but he's seeking something from the world. And in this instance, in this particular category, it is the praise and the recognition of the people. Right? So this is Arriya. Um, also, it can be when a person, he, for example, acquires knowledge or he teaches, but only so that he can earn a living. Right? So you find many people, they go to an Islamic institution, they will get a degree, and the real reason why they're doing it is simply when they go back home, they will be able to get a job. And it's just purely material and nothing else. And they're not interested in the hereafter, it's just simply earning a living. And so the same can be th- said about any other such you know, related uh, activity. If you're doing it for wealth, like an act of worship, an act of obedience, an act which otherwise you know, it pleases Allah if it's done for His sake, but you do that in order to gain some material benefit. You do it for the world. This now enters into this ayah, this verse. Whoever desires the life of this world and its glitter, we shall pay, we shall give it to them and pay them in full. Right? Another example is a person who does actions of worship, but he does them because of a health benefit. Right? So he'll fast. So for example, a Muslim might, you know, read that there's something that the disbelievers have discovered called intermittent fasting, where you fast, you know, uh, two times a week and uh, it's really good for your health, it's good for your um, blood sugar levels is good for, you know, general immune, you know, re- uh, rejuvenating the immune system. And he thinks, oh, that's, that's good this, let me fast Mondays and, uh, you know, Thursdays. And so this person fasts and that's because of the health benefit that he's seeking. He doesn't seek the hereafter. So now he wants, this time it's a, it's a physical physical benefit in relation to his body. So this now again also comes under this ayah. So here we see that a person might either be looking for material benefit or it could be physical benefit or it could be some recognition or praise from the people. All of these he's doing righteous deeds which you know which a person should really be seeking the hereafter with those deeds but he's seeking the world with those deeds. So now this is how a believer enters into this ayah. Right? And he's becoming like what the disbelievers are upon because with the disbelievers it is a different level altogether right they are wholeheartedly after the world and nothing else so when a believer falls into these actions then he comes under this ayah because he has some of the traits you know he, he's kind of you know behaving like them uh, and seeking the world but this time by by deeds of righteousness so um So then after this, we are seeing that Allah Azawajal has commanded us and warned us not to be inclined towards, not to be friends with, and not to be close with those types of people who have become heedless of the hereafter. So he said, as occurs in Surah An-Najm, فَأَعْرِضْ عَمَّنْ تَوَلَّى عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَلَمْ يُرِدْ إِلَّا الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا So turn away from the one who has turned away from our remembrance and who does not seek or desire except the life of the world. So in other words, we are commanded as believers to turn away from those types of people that we see who've turned away from the truth and are not interested in the hereafter and they are just engrossed in the life of this world and pursuing the life of this world. And likewise... Allah Azawajal, He mentions that the disbeliever, whatever he acquires in the life of this world of like food and drink and pleasure and wealth and riches and family and offspring, all of that is simply his portion that Allah gave him in the life of this world. But in the hereafter, that person will not have any share at all. And Allah Azawajal, He says, as occurs in Surah Al-Ahqaf, وَيَوْمَ يُعْرَضُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا عَلَى النَّارِ أَذْحَبْتُمْ طَيِّبَاتِكُمْ فِي حَيَاتِكُمُ الدُّنْيَا 
واستمتعتم بها فاليوم تجزون عذاب الهون بما كنتم تستكبرون في الارض بغير الحق وما كنتم وبما كنتم تفسقون so he says the day that those who disbelieve will be presented or subjected to the fire your you know the the good things of the world you uh, consumed and you exhausted them all all the good things that you were given you exhausted them all and you took benefit you enjoyed uh, you took benefit out of them all of these good things you were given so today you will be rewarded with a humiliating punishment you will be recompensed with a humiliating punishment on account of you know the fact that you used to be arrogant upon the earth without any due right or due cause and because you would indulge in sin you were engaged in a sin and disobedience so uh this is the the the, the portion of the of the disbeliever and you know because he took his share of the world and had no interest in the hereafter so the point being here from all of this that being pleased and satisfied with the world and being comfortable therein and preferring it over the hereafter this is from the main primary reasons and causes for people entering the hellfire satisfaction with the world and satisfaction with the world obviously is behind many of the causes the, the causes of disbelief why a person chooses to remain a disbeliever and also why a person chooses to indulge in sin as well for the believer it is from the primary reasons for entering into the hellfire whether eternally or whether for a limited time in the case of the people of iman and the people of tawhid and allah azza wa explains ذلك بأنه مستحب الحياة الدنيا على الآخرة وأن الله لا يحدي القوم الكافرين. This is because they loved and preferred the life of the world over the hereafter, and that Allah does not guide a disbelieving people. And in another another ayah, Allah Azza wa Jalla He described such people: الذين يستحبون الحياة الدنيا على الآخرة ويصدون عن سبيل الله وَيَبْغُونَهَا عِوَجًا أُولَٰئِكَ فِي ضَلَالٍ بَعِيدٍ Those who love the life of the world over the hereafter and they inhibit or hinder from the path of Allah and they seek a crooked path. They seek it as a crooked, crooked path. Those are the ones who are in far, far misguidance. And Imam al-Shawkani, rahimahullah, he said that meaning such people, they prefer this world due to their love of this world. And we see in another ayah, فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى uh, In this passage, فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى As for the one who transgressed and who preferred the life of the world, then indeed the jahim, the hellfire, is his abode. Regarding this, Qatada, رَحِمَهُ الله, He said that those who are the people of disbelief they loved the small part of the world over the abundance of the hereafter what is in this world is nothing it's not even a drop in an ocean and so the disbeliever in his disbelief and his pursuit of the world he is given preference to the the small tiny amount which is in the world over the abundance of the hereafter and he made this remark qatada in relation to the statement of allah azza in surah al-baqarah ulaika ulaika alladhina ashtaru al-hayata ad-dunya bil-akhirah fala yukhaffafu anhum al-adhabu wa la hum yunsarun that they are the ones who have purchased the life of this world with the hereafter so they sold the hereafter in order to purchase this life so the punishment will not be lightened for them and they will not be aided similarly another description of the people of disbelief is the, is that they basically sold faith in allah and worshiping allah alone the tawhid they sold all of that in order to purchase 
some benefits in the world. Some of the benefits of the world. On the tongue of Ibrahim alayhi salam, who said to his people, Allah subjil, he mentions, وَقَالَ إِنَّمَا اتَّخَذْتُم مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْثَانًا مَوَدَّةَ بَيْنَكُمْ أَمَوَدَّةَ بَيْنِكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Indeed, you have taken besides Allah idols out of mutual love between yourselves in the life of this world. ثُمَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكْفُرُ بَعْدُكُمْ بِبَعْدٍ وَيَلْعَنُ بَعْدُكُمْ بَعْضًا وَمَأْوَاكُمُ النَّارِ وَمَا لَكُمْ مِنْ نَاسِرِينَ So these people, what they did is that they took the religion which was based upon idol worship, worshipping others besides Allah, they took it as, you know, the, the, it, it was the mutual affection and love that they had on the basis of this false religion, they used that to acquire the benefits of the world at the expense of the hereafter. So the consequence of this will be that on the day of judgment, all of these parties who showed mutual love, they will disbelieve in each other. They will free themselves from each other. And they will actually curse one another. But their abode will be in the hellfire and they will have no one to aid them. So, also we see that the life of this world has been beautified for the people of disbelief. Because of their disbelief, they've been blinded by it. And so they hold fast to it. So as Allah Azawajal, He says again in Surah Al-Baqarah, زُيِّنَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا وَيَسْخَرُونَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَاللَّهُ يَرْزُقُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Those who disbelieve, the life of this world has been beautified for them. And they mock, they make mockery of the, those who believe. And those who fear Allah, who have taqwa, they will be above them on the day of judgment. And Allah is the one who gives provision, gives sustenance to whomever He wills, without any measure, without any account. So again, we see from this verse, it is that when we see the, the condition of the people of disbelief, it is all just materialism, it is all just consumption, you know, buying, drinking, eating, enjoying, it's just all materialist consumption. And in the lands of the people of disbelief, you see that this is how everything operates. Everything is commerce. Everything is commercial. Everything is material. Even the way that the whole, um, you know, the, the economy and the politics, the whole system is set up to uh, for consumption and always expanding the economy. The economy has to always be expanding. Why? Because it is all based upon interest, right? These are these are interest and debt based economies. So the the, the 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 economy has to always be expanding in order to keep serving and keep the payments of the interest. And so the materialism and the consumption it just continues and continues and continues and continues. And you know this dominates the life of the people who who live a, you know a life of of disbelief and whose life is not governed by. Uh, the pleasure of Allah and the commands and prohibitions of Allah and putting the hereafter ahead of the life of this world. It's all just materialism and consumption and then love and attachment to all of this. Ibn Juraj, rahimahullah, he said that the disbelievers, they pursue the life of the world and they seek it. And then they mock those who believe when they see the people, when they see the, those who believe, pursuing the hereafter, seeking the hereafter. So you see these people mocking, you know, paradise, mocking hellfire, mocking belief in, in the last day, and mocking anyone who believes in, 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 in those beliefs, thinking that there is only the life of this world and that such people are just deluded. And so this is from their way, they will mock, mock the believers. And Allah Azza wa Jal, 
he he's mentioned all, also the severity you know the, the 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 degree to which the people of disbelief from the people of the book and the mushrikeen the polytheists how they stick and hold fast to the world allah subhanahu mentioned in surah al-baqarah and he's speaking here about the yahud yahud and the mushrikun yahud and the mushrikun so he says wala tajidannahum ahrasa an-nasi ala hayati wa min alladhina ashraku you will find them, meaning, because the passage is about the Yahud, you will find them to be the most zealous and eager of people for the life of this world. For the life of this world, meaning for wealth and material and for longevity, you know, living a long life and so on and so forth. And likewise, from those who are the, the people of shirk, the polytheists. يَوَدُّ أَحَدُهُمْ لَوْ يُعَمَّرُ لو يعمر الف سنه وما هو بمزحزحه من العذاب ان يعمر والله بصير بما يعملون so one of them loves that he should live for a thousand years but that will not save him from the punishment that he should be given a length you know a lengthy life and allah is all seeing of whatever they do Look at how these two groups or two parties, the Yahud and the Mushrikun, have been described as being the, the Ahras, meaning the most zealous of people for the life of this world. In another ayah in the Quran, Allah Azawajal also mentions the same two groups as the ones having the most enmity to the people of Iman. So the same two people who are the most desirous of the life of this world are the same two people who are the most uh, enmitous, have the most enmity and hatred to the people of Iman. We see in the ayah, la tajidanna. So you see similarity in the verses, wala tajidanna hum ahras al nas ala hayati wa min al ladina ashraku in this ayah, and in another ayah, la tajidanna ashad al nas adawa lil ladina amanu al yahud wal ladina ashraku. You will find the most severe of people in enmity towards those who believe to be the Yahud and those who commit shirk, the polytheists, the pagans, the idol worshippers. And then it goes on to mention how those who are the closest and you know who are, are nice to the people of Iman are the Nasara, those who say we are Nasara, we are Christians. And this is because... Allah describes them, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ قِسِّسِينَ وَرُحْبَانًا وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ This is because among them are priests and uh, ascetics and, you know, because they are not arrogant. So here is a description that among the Christians in general, you know, the ones who say we are Christians, they are closer to the Muslims because they are closer to the truth because they followed Isa alayhi salam. And because among them are people who, you know, renounce the world, and they, they, they are priests, they are given to worship and so on and so forth, and they are not arrogant, they don't have arrogance. So they are closer to the, to the Muslims. Um, Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he says about the, the, the prior verse that we mentioned, about those who are most eager for the life of this world, that these people are very eager to have a long life, and... You know, they want a long life because they know that they have, they are committing evil deeds and they know that they are disobedient to Allah Azza wa Jal. And, uh, we see that in contrast to them, the world is a prison for the believer, a din, a dunya, sijin al mu'min, wa jannatul kafir. The world is a prison for the believer and a paradise for the disbeliever. Also, we see that the people of disbelief, they are pleased with the life of this world, even if it is a life of dhul and hawan. Even if it is a life of humility and lowliness. Why? Because when a person, his greatest concern is just to seek the world and to seek the pleasures of the world, then he will put the knowledge of that above any other type of knowledge. Above 
the beneficial knowledge, above revealed knowledge. And that's why you see that the people of disbelief, their knowledge of this world is only what is zahir, only the apparent, what they see, the apparent you know, uh, type of knowledge of the world. And that's why in another ayah Allah Azawajal, He mentioned in Surah Rum, يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا That they know only the apparent, the apparent of the life of this world. Right? So, uh, in other words, whatever they see of, its, of the glitter of the world and the pleasure of the world and the enjoyments of the world. So, for example, all of the sightseeing of the amazing sights, all of the beautiful food and all the places you can go for the beautiful food, all the luxurious clothing, and you know, all of these things, they will have all of this knowledge. Because their greatest concern is, uh, are these affairs. What is, what is the greatest way to enjoy oneself? What is the best way to, um, <clears throat> you know, to, to have pleasure? The best food, the best drink, the best clothing, the most luxurious, and so on and so forth. This is the knowledge. This is the knowledge. This is all that the, the knowledge revolves around. If you reflect upon, you know, uh, such uh, societies. And so, in other words, the knowledge is tied to the shahawat, the, the, the desires and the pleasures, you know, that they that they pursue and they seek. Um, and wahum anil akhirati hum ghafilun. Yet they are heedless of the hereafter. They are heedless of the hereafter. Also, um, we see in some other ayat in the Quran. Uh, such as what will happen in the hereafter. Allah mentions certain scenarios that will happen in the hereafter, uh, such as, for example, when um, hell, uh, such as, for example, when paradise will be made unlawful upon the disbelievers. وَنَادَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ أَنْ أَفِيدُوا عَلِينَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ أَوْ مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ So, the disbelievers will say, they will call out, the people of the hellfire will call out, and they will say to the people of paradise, give us something of the water. Give us something of the water. And something of what Allah has provided you with. And what will the believers say? قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَرَّمَهُمَا عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ Indeed, Allah has prohibited them upon the disbelievers. أَلَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا دِينَهُمْ لَهْوًا وَلَعِبًا وَغَرَّتْهُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فَالْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاهُمْ كَمَا نَسُوا لِقَاءَ يَوْمِهِمْ هَذَا وَمَا كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَجْحَدُونَ Those who took their religion as just something which is a play and a pastime, an amusement, and the life of the world deceived them. So today we shall abandon them, ignore them and abandon them, just as they forgot this meeting, the meeting of this day. And uh, and also because that they used to reject our signs. Right? So this is one scenario that will happen on Yawm al you know, uh, the disbelievers who are in hellfire. They will try to ask the believers for something of the, of the, the pleasures and the benefits, the water and the provision. And similarly, another occurrence that will happen is that the jinn and the men will be addressed يَا مَعْشَرَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ يَقُصُّونَ عَلِيكُمْ آيَاتِ وَيُنْذِرُونَكُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا قَالُوا شَهِدْنَا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِنَا وَغَرَّتْهُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا وَشَهِدُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا كَافِرِينَ O jinn and men, did not messengers come to you from among you? Rehearsing and reciting to you my signs? And warning you of this, of the, of the, of this meeting, the day of this meeting, they will say, we have testified against ourselves. And the life of the world deceived them, and they testify, will testify against themselves that they were indeed disbelievers. So this will happen that every disbeliever will bear witness against himself. Yes, indeed, I was a disbeliever in the life of this world. Right? And he will recognize that he was deceived by the life of the world and led him to uh, be heedless of the hereafter and to disbelieve in Allah or to commit shirk 
with Allah Azza wa Jal. Um, so the life of this world is something that brings ruin and destruction and we have been ordered to leave such people alone and not to you know encounter with such people وَذَرِ الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا دِينَهُمْ لَعِبًا وَلَهْوًا وَغَرَّتْهُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا uh, leave those who have taken their religion as play and pastime and who have been deceived by the life of the world. وَذَكِّرْ بِهِ أَن تُبْسَلَ نَفْسٌ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ لَيْسَ لَهَا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلِيٌّ وَلَا شَفِيعٌ And, um, you know, remind by way of this, meaning by way of this Qur'an, so that any soul that, you know, comes to death, will come to death and be destroyed by way of whatever it has earned. And it will not have any protector nor interceder besides Allah Azza wa Jal. So this has all described all of these verses. What do they what do they tell us? These verses tell us that the disbeliever is content with the world and that's it. There's nothing beyond death. There's nothing in the hereafter, it's just dust and bones. There's no resurrection, there's no judgment, there's no reward, there's no punishment. And so obviously this means that you are going to be content and pursue the life of this, uh, you will pursue the life of this world. And as we mentioned, Allah Azawajal is never unjust to the disbeliever. We mentioned already that Allah gives good healthy bodies, gives them increase in provision and all of the benefits in the world, Allah has not been unjust to the disbelievers for whatever apparent deeds of goodness they do in the life of this world. Because many of the disbelievers, they give charity uh, to good causes, they are kind to their parents, they are kind to their children. Uh, there's so many things that, they, that, that, that there's goodness that you see from them. So Allah rewards them in the life of this, of this world. But also there's something else uh, which, which we need to have a, uh, to understand a more complete picture, which is that the life of the world is also a punishment for the disbeliever as well. There's also punishment in the life of this world for the disbeliever as well. And there is a wisdom behind that as well. There's a wisdom behind that as well. So, as we mentioned, the people of disbelief prefer this world, they stick to it, their knowledge is only knowledge of, of the world and acquiring wealth and you know tasting pleasures and so on and so forth. And many of their sciences and, and whatever else, you know, the, the, the fields of knowledge are related to that. And um, but Allah Azza wa Jal mentions something here in an ayah in Surah Tawbah. فَلَا تُعْجِبْكَ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُهُمْ إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ بِهَا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَتَزْحَقَ أَنفُسُهُمْ وَهُمْ كَافِرُونَ do not be amazed or surprised by their wealth, nor by their offspring. Indeed, Allah desires to punish them by way of these two things in the life of the world. And so that their souls are taken at death whilst they are disbelievers. So here, Ibn Zayd, rahimullah, mentioned about this ayah, meaning that they will be punished by way of masa'ib, by way of calamities. And which are basically a type of punishment for them, but which are a reward for the believer. And Allah puts them to trial in the life of the world with calamities. Why? In order to remind them of the hereafter. وَلَنُذِيقَنَّهُمْ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَدْنَى دُونَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَكْبَرِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ So that we may give them a taste of the lesser punishment the lower punishment, the nearer punishment, besides the greater punishment, in order that they may return. And Ibn Abbas said, Al-Adhabu Al-Adna is the calamities of the world, and the illnesses, and the calamities, the trials, by which Allah puts His servants you know, to test, so that they might repent. So now we have a more complete picture of how Allah, how He treats the people of disbelief. It is with perfect justice and it is also with mercy. How is this? We already saw previously that any apparent goodness 
that the people of disbelief bring, all of their reward is given to them in the life of this world. Right? So everything they have, the air that they breathe, the water that they drink, the food that they eat, the clothes that they wear, the provision that they acquire, and every kind of uh, benefit and pleasure that they have, all of this is, they are given recompense. Right? So they have not been wronged by any apparent good that they have done in the life of this world. That's one. Number two, what about the calamities then? How do we explain the calamities then? Well, the calamities, there are two things. That it is punishment for disbelief and sin and transgression, but also it is to, as a reminder, to remind them that they have a Lord and who has favored them and bestowed bounties upon them and that they need to be obedient to and to be thankful to. And for that reason you see, there are many, many of the people of disbelief, they have a calamity in their life, right? A person dies in the family, or a new person dies, or they come close to death, or they suffer a financial setback and their life is destroyed, or they have depression, or they have something, or they're addicted to drugs or alcohol or something, they have some you know, calamity or something in their life. And this leads them to a realization. It leads them to Tawbah. It leads them to seek guidance. Right? There's something that they are seeking. So many of these calamities that Allah Azawajal brings to the people of disbelief, it is also guidance for them as well. Intending guidance for them. That they may be reminded. So some of them for whom Allah has written guidance, Allah opens the heart to guidance. And others, their hearts are only become hardened. Why? Because Allah knew already in his prior knowledge that such people don't really want guidance. They're not interested in guidance. So these are the types of people you will see that they will even become, you know, even greater disbelievers. Even become more and more arrogant. Right? You know, someone dies in their family. So instead of being humble, or maybe they have an accident or something, instead of being humble, their heart becomes even more hard. It's as if they are resentful and, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, become even more staunch in their disbelief, right? Out of arrogance, pure arrogance. That's all it is. And similarly, you will see even with many, uh, uh, you know, as happens with uh, among the apostates, are those who've had a hard life, you know, hardships, calamities, or they've been oppressed, or you know, their culture or their people followed uh, a fabricated, distort, distorted you know, understanding of Islam, right? Or those injustices or whatever, and it just leads them to, you know, the heart becomes even more hard, you know, hard. And further in, in disbelief and, and rejection, right? Uh, you know, and so, you know, there are many wisdoms behind all of this. And um, uh, as Allah mentions in another ayah, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ذَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى The one who turns away from my remembrance, then he will have a narrow, constricted life. And we shall raise him on the day of judgment, blind. So, this section here is point number two. Point number two, which is that the dunya is also a place of punishment for the disbeliever. In addition to the disbeliever, being rewarded for his apparent good deeds in the life of this world. Right? Why? Because he sophist with the world and that's it. We'll finish with the third point. Uh, we'll finish this section with the third point, And which is that the punishment, um, there is also a humiliating punishment in the life of this world. And we'll finish with, with this section before we break for the, for the salah. So, in the Quran, a word is used, al-khizi, al-khizi, which is humiliation, something which is evil, subjugation, lowliness, lowliness, right? And this is how Allah punishes a people because of their disbelief and leaves them in humiliation in the life of this world. And Allah Azawajal, He says, um, for example, about the people of Ad. فَأَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ رِيحًا صَرْصَرًا فِي أَيَّامٍ نَحِسَاتٍ لِنُذِيقَهُمْ عَذَابَ الْخِزْيِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا 
ولا عذاب الآخرة أخزى وهم لا ينصرون. So the people of Ad they were punished by a screaming wind for many days in order that we may give them a taste of humiliation, humiliating punishment in the life of the world. And the punishment of the hereafter is akhza, is even more humiliating. And they will not be aided. Notice here, in fact not here, but in many verses of the Qur'an, Allah uses, you know, in comparing the punishment of the world to the punishment of the hereafter. So in this verse that we've just read, um, or in sorry, in the next, in this verse that we've just read, وَلَا عَذَابُ الْآخِرَةِ أَخْزَى The punishment of the hereafter is more humiliating than the punishment in this of, of, of this world. So when you see, for example, the people of Fir'aun that were destroyed, how the people of Fir'aun were humiliated by various types of punishment and destroyed. Or the people of Ad, how they were destroyed. Or the people of Thamud, how they were destroyed. And many other examples in history, like for example the people of you know Rome, Pompeii, and the, the volcano, the you know how they were destroyed and turned to ashes whilst doing those evil, filthy deeds. Examples abound. That humiliation is is nothing compared to the humiliation in the hereafter. So one word used is akhza, more humiliating. In another ayah, we see Allah Azza He says, فَأَذَاقَهُمُ اللَّهُ الْخِزْيَ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا عَذَابُ الْآخِرَةِ أَكْبَرُ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ so Allah made them to taste humiliation in the life of the world, but the punishment of the hereafter is akbar, is greater, if they only knew. So we have, here now, we have akhza, um, we have akbar, we also have in another ayah, وَلَا عَذَابُ الْآخِرَةِ أَشَّقَّ وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَاقَ And the punishment of the hereafter is ashaqqa. It is more, it is greater hardship upon a person, the punishment in the hereafter. And, um, we will see in another verse as well, ashad, wa yawma al qiyamati yuradduna ila ashad al adab. Those who disbelieve, meaning that they will be subjected in the hereafter to, to ashad al adab, meaning a more intense, the most intense of punishment. So the point being that in this section today we've looked at how has Allah Azawajal described the condition of a disbeliever in the life of this world. And this contrasts with the condition of a believer in the life of this world which we shall look at in the next lesson. So the disbeliever is content, satisfied with this life, has no vision for the hereafter, is interested only in the pursuit of lusts, pleasures, possessions, acquiring things, and the knowledge is largely restricted only to that. And for that reason, we see that uh, Allah Azawajal will reward them in the life of this world for whatever good deeds, apparent good deeds that they did. Allah is not unjust towards them. And likewise, He will punish them for either punishment for their disbelief or to remind them and for them to repent and remember. And that's why we see that from the disbelievers are those who when they have a calamity or a hardship or some difficulty, then we see among them are those whom Allah guides by way of that hardship and they come to the truth. And others just persist upon their misguidance and their arrogance. Right? So that's number two, that the world is also a punishment. Not only is it a paradise for the disbeliever, it is also a punishment for the disbeliever as well. And thirdly, it is also a you know uh, humiliation for those whom Allah chooses to destroy in the life of this world. Like the people of Fir'aun, like the people of Ad, like the people of Thamud, and many other nations who were destroyed, and they were left in utter humiliation for their disbelief. Right, So when we look at the people of disbelief, this is how the Qur'an has described their state and condition in the life of this world. And the hereafter is something else. So this brings us to the end of this lesson. Inshallah ta'ala, in the next lesson, 
we're going to look at how the Qur'an has described the condition of a believer in the life of this world. Contrasting that to the to the, the way of a disbeliever. So with that we'll conclude. Uh, we'll stop for salana. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.